And welcome back to the We Don't Know Stuff podcast. Yo, yo, yo. We're here in episode 12, and it's a special episode because oh, if you've been listening to all our episodes, except for the last two, I would say, I think, um, we've pretty much last done two. a top five every episode. Oh, yeah, that's right. But uh, These are facts. But we've decided that since our top fives have started to become really expanded upon in each episode, and they eventually become... They felt condensed on those first ones. Like, that too. Plus, they like, were taking up half of the episode. So it was like, okay, we kind of took a step back and took a look at it and realized, you know what? Let's just dedicate a single episode every so often to just straight up, just full on top five, whatever topic we choose. It's the only way we could do it justice. Right. You know? Because otherwise... You flesh it out. Right. You got to flesh it out a little bit. So this episode um, is a special top five episode, and we are going to be talking about our top five sports films. Oh, so um, sports films. Typically, too, we kind of uh, list out our our top five before we kind of start. We kind of get an idea, but in this case, since we decided to dedicate a whole episode to Rule, the top fives. Yeah. We decided, well, let's figure out our top five while we're doing it. More regulations, huh? <laughs> I like how that carries over from the previous episode. Regulations <laughs> like a motherfucker. Okay. The rules have changed, ladies and gentlemen. So here we go. So um, what's, what, what, was, what do you think is probably the first? I mean, this is a hard. This is going to be hard to figure out exact. But what do you think is probably the first fucking sports film you've ever seen? Ever. Oh, man. Ever. That's tough to remember. I, that's why I dig deep. Let's see. The first sports film I guess I can like for sure remember watching was probably... I'm not sure what came out first, <laughs> but I'm thinking a two in my head. Okay. Um, them. Is The Mighty Ducks and Cool Runnings. Oh fuck! <laughs> Those are the first two that I can remember, like as a kid, like seeing. Wow! Now, now you're making me. But then there was wonder like, which one came out first. But then, yeah. But then, there, of course, there was always like the Sandlot. Like, there's a lot of like little sports movies for kids around the time. Angels in the Outfield. Mm. I can't remember what years, but which came first. But, um, Space Jam. Eventually. Space Jam, I know, was like '96, so yeah. that was later on. So I know that definitely wasn't the first. There was probably already like two or three Mighty Ducks by that point. Oh, yeah. They had already dropped number two. At least yeah. two by then, I'm pretty sure. Play... Or maybe even they dropped two that no, they had number two where they had to play uh, Team Iceland. And they wore all black and shit. Yo, that team yeah. looked sick. That was popping. <laughs> that <laughs> that was poppin'. team was sick. That was popping. They were all big boys. Half of them had a beard as thick as mine and shit. <laughs> shit was crazy. <laughs> he played in the youth league. Fucking Iceland. Oh, I see you. Shit. That shit was nice. Fuck it. What about you, though? What's your... What do you think? <sighs> like, the first one I've ever seen? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Shit. Oh, my God. Like, that is a tough one, but I want to say... I want to say the... <sighs> it's probably Major League. Oh, what year did that come out? 80s, yeah. huh? In the 80s, yeah, right? Yeah, 89 yeah, yeah. or 88 or something like yeah, that. Yeah, and that thing was already flying around all the cable networks yeah. that had like the TV movie, either right, on a Saturday right, right. or whatever. Like I saw me, I feel like I saw Major League like almost every other weekend. Yeah, that you makes I mean? sense. That actually makes sense. It could be Major League. So, too, that's, yeah. so that's why I'm thinking like Major League, because I'm sure I saw other ones before that, but Major League is the first one I really paid attention to just because I think it caught my attention Honestly, I don't even think I don't even remember liking baseball that much at that age. But right. I think it caught my attention because of the wackiness of that shit. You know what I mean? Like I was like, wait, what the fuck? I thought this movie was about baseball, and I started paying attention about it more. And I was like, this shit it has is fucking nothing. To, it's like almost has nothing to do with baseball. Like it as has, an adult, I'm like, man, this shit has like almost nothing to do with baseball. Oh, and it's still hilarious no, to me great. to this day. I watched it like probably like two weeks ago. No, I it was on TV like two days ago. Yeah, yeah. say it's still on TV. It's crazy. It's funny. It's Joe Boo's rum and all that noise. I love it. Mighty Ducks came out in 1992, and then Sandlot was 93. So, yeah, it probably was Mighty Ducks. Yeah, Mighty Ducks. Oh, shit. So, when did Major League come out? 1989. Okay. So, 
Or you yeah. know, could have been Hoosiers. That was eighty six. I, I haven't seen Hoosiers. Can oh, you, you never seen that? Hoosiers? Can't believe oh, that. Shit. I heard that that's okay. probably like the greatest sports film of all time, according uh, to all I don't know about that. critics. Well, I could tell you, it's probably not going to make my top five. But well, I haven't seen. But it, just so I'm just thinking in terms of like what I've probably seen first. It was prop. Okay, so. It was probably Mighty Ducks because Cool Runnings came out in '93, so it, it probably was Mighty Ducks that I, is the first that I really remember seeing. Okay, that makes sense actually. Mighty Ducks was popping for the '90s. Everybody, no, my... everybody liked hockey and shit. <laughs> well, for just that second, <laughs> yeah, I like still don't think anybody no. on the West Coast watched hockey. Yeah, no, I mean, not like that. But I mean, like, but like hockey, like you wanted to play, you wanted to go. I remember like getting my first pair of rollerblades and going like let's go play some fucking hockey and then it definitely helped um disney launch their fucking mighty ducks team in anaheim oh yeah of course it, it definitely totally helped build that fan base that right shit. off the top so then the stupid angels when they gave them that angels in the outfield movie too yeah with with my homie from fucking um dark brown Dark Brown was in that shit. And just man. like, just like, um, God damn it, they fucked that shit. And up. just like for the Dodgers, they had um, dodgeball. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> can we get a little fucking drunk? <laughs> wow, <laughs> damn. <clears throat> All right, okay. Um, okay. So, yeah, I would say Mighty Ducks. Mm. That's probably the first. But um, what would you say uh, is like the funniest? Would you say Major League is probably the funniest? Of the early ones? Of just in general, like in your head. No. Which one? Do you, which sports movies do you think is the funniest no. sports? Bull film? Durham is fucking funny. Okay. Have you seen Bull Durham? Yeah. Oh, Bull Durham's fucking funny. <laughs> Dude, but just the explanation of the fucking movie. It's just about a fucking... It's basically about a fucking groupie that sleeps with the star of the fucking Bull Durham team. Whoever's balling gets to just bone her all season. <laughs> and they're just competing for that shit. Oh, it's a fucking great movie. With homeboy, what is it? Tim Robbins is the oh, fucking... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's the lead guy. <laughs> and, I, and I think Kevin Costner's in that shit too. Yeah. And Kevin Costner's the old star that's like burning out the right. old star pitcher. And this guy's the young. He's only like nineteen or twenty in the movie. He's coming up. He's and like he, the young. Yeah, and and homegirls hooking him up. So he thinks he's bad. Like his his head's blowing up. And Kevin Costner's just there to be like, "You ain't shit, homie." Well, I think that's what like Major League was kind of a spoof of. It was kind of like almost a spoof of Bill Durham. Yeah, probably. You know, like the eighty. I imagine because it came out a year later. Bull Durham came out in eighty eight. Yeah. yeah, maybe. Maybe, but Bull Durham's funny, and you know another one that's funny that's that's a fucking sports movie to me? And actually, this might be the first sports movie, too. And it's going to battle with uh, Major League for sure, but Caddyshack. Remember oh, yeah, Caddyshack? Caddyshack was cool. Caddyshack was fucking funny, but Caddyshack was just straight-up slapstick comedy. Right. It wasn't even really trying to be a golf movie. It just centered itself around golf because it was... Because it that was just... It already gave a great setting because it was like right. these bougie ass mm -hmm. people. Let's make fun of them. You know what I mean? It, it was great. Nah, it was funny. It was great. So Especially I, for its time, it was really funny. Yeah, yeah. I mean, fucking Happy Gilmore. Come on, dude. Yeah, I would probably say. <laughs> I would probably say Happy Gilmore is probably the funniest. That or maybe Waterboy. Waterboy oh, yeah, is fucking Waterboy. hilarious. Yeah, Waterboy is a classic. Wow. Yeah, because of all the, cause of all the jabs, like isn't that basically Ed Orgeron right now at LSU? Well, you know, me and the boys just gonna we, we, we gonna wake up, eat a hearty breakfast, and go out there and just kill. You know? Ed -o. Yeah, but like, I yeah, wonder, was, I wonder that, if he me, talks that, much at home. It must hurt. For me, those two were probably like the funniest. Yeah, Lo I Major mean, League is hilarious too, though. Major, yeah, Major League, Major League Two yeah. is even better. But uh, yeah, so I mean, there's some funny ones out there. Kar What's Karate Kid had its elements? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Karate ones. Kid is <laughs> put him in a body bag. <laughs> or Mr. Miyagi fucking all those kids up like that. <laughs> 
Yeah. Like, damn, you just guys got beat up by somebody's grandpa and shit. Bro, you're 18 and you just got worked by. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel San. Oh, man. See, I mean, probably all of these could make me laugh, though. Oh, but you know how there was Rudy? Right? Yeah. Everybody remembers Rudy. Of course. Fucking weak ass tale about some fucking Notre Dame come up. <laughs> Wah. <laughs> Fuck that movie. Nah, but it's, nah, a, it's good a good movie. movie. It's a good movie. It's a though, good movie. But, Regardless but... of of how you feel about rivalries, it's a yeah, good movie. Yeah, yeah, No, no, my bad. Fuck <laughs> Notre Dame. <laughs> Fuck Notre Dame. No, but there was another one that was called Lucas. Do you remember Lucas? Nah, I never seen that Where the fucking shit. kid is trying out for the fucking high school football nah. team and he can't make it. It's very Rudy-ish, but it's a little bit funnier. Nah, I never seen that. And uh, finally he gets put in the game. And they go in slow motion. The quarterback does like a three-step drop. He's wide fucking open. Quarterback just throws it. Boom. The girl he likes is in the stands. They zoom into her face. She's fucking beautiful and shit. <laughs> He's like, yeah. You're just like, everything's super slow motion. This motherfucker has his hands out. The ball lands right in his hands. In the end zone. Everything. Glory, right? Drops that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, that movie's a classic just for that scene alone, my man. Because that was like one of the first movies where I saw while you're watching it as a young kid, you know, you don't understand really movie magic to the core. So you get locked in sh- moments like that and you're like, oh, my God, he's going to get the game winning touchdown. He finally got to play. <laughs> and it was more real life than that. It was like, nope, of course you dropped it. That moment was too big for your ass. That's crazy. Uh, Lucas. So pe- Lucas. Yeah, look. I'm just write that down. Yeah, so. look that motherfucker up. And it's got some um it's it's uh one of the Feldmans. I think Corey Feldman's oh, in it. Oh shit. I think that's who's the fucking lead role. One of those motherfuckers. Yeah, but that was a good one. What's your uh, what would you say is one of your favorite sports dramas? Oh, my favorite sports drama? Like uh, spoiler alert, but this is probably my favorite sports film of all time, without a doubt. But I'm just going to drop it right here. So, fuck it. But Raging Bull. Easy. Poppin'. Easy. Poppin'. That is the greatest sports drama of all time. To me. To me. Because it even, Raging Bull, it even transcends fucking just being a sports film. It's on the list, I think, for being greatest films of all time top 10 Dang. for sure for we sure. might have to do a top 10 the greatest films of all time episode it's just that's de niro it's fucking uh scorsese Sc- scorsese at his fucking best like this is a scorsese masterpiece right here and fucking um, i wouldn't say it's best but it's very good no i mean at his best like at the height of his you know directorial career you know what I mean? Like, this motherfucker <clears throat> was already, like, a seasoned, very good director well, yeah. at this point. You know what I mean? So this is a masterpiece regardless. Like, this is getting a painting from, like, a great fucking painter. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, it doesn't matter if it's his shittiest work, right? <laughs> like, you'll take a shitty Picasso any day, right? It's true. And be like, oh, yeah, yeah. So, whatever, but fucking, um, no, what's... What's the other guy that fucking plays his brother in that movie? Joe Pesci. Joe Pesci. Dude, that's Joe Pesci's first big hit. Was it? In a film. Yeah. That's Joe Pesci coming out party right there. Raging fucking bull. Oh, my God. That's fucking... That's the greatest... Yeah. To me, that's the greatest sports drama. One of the greater dramas of all time. And probably my number one. Just, just cause I you Damn. brought you brought it out of me. Came out in 1980, and it's and even nicer for me, cause I enjoy my you know film noirs, mm-hmm. and I enjoy my old classic black and white movies. The entire movie's in black and white, beautifully shot in yeah, black and white. Yeah, that's one thing that's pretty dope about it too. Cinematography is. is fu- oh, and man. then he did that in the 80s, like right as they came out of the black and white. So it was like probably like a real nostalgia hit too for a lot of folks at that time, and and it just remind them like no, and it also put them in the setting that like of the of when this, when right. that 
thing but was the time, happening. The time yeah, frame it was relating right. it to like mm -hmm. there still wasn't color TV. Right. So this is how you would have seen that story play back out then, anyway. Right. This is how you would have seen that boxing match. Well, then you know back know? then when you when you would watch boxing, all it was is in black and white. So, exactly. That's what I'm saying. So you're like, watching it like if you're watching like a boxing match, but you're actually watching the story of this dude's life, like. And, it's and how he deals it, that's with what it I'm saying. mentally. No, Scorsese yeah, Scorsese was already. No, it's like, one of the. It's one. It's, it's definitely crazy. It's definitely like if you're one of the top five raging films, for sure. bull. Like, please go watch. No, raging it's popping. Bull definitely popping immediately. It, uh, buy the fucking Blu-ray on me. <laughs> Send me the fucking receipt. I'll pay. I'll pay. Don't do that. I'll pay that shit for you. Where wants that? That's how. That's how many homes need. Disclaimer: raging He will not pay for it. He'll pay for it with a congratulations that you, that you got it. <laughs> Yeah, I'll fucking do a receipt shout out <laughs> <laughs> post. <laughs> uh, okay, but yeah, I mean, um, a majority of like sports films have been about baseball too. I think the better ones are boxing ones, but there's also a lot of baseball ones. Yeah, there's a lot of baseball and a lot of boxing, definitely for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, I think one of my favorite dramas sports dramas yeah it's probably rocky i really liked the original rocky i thought it was just well crafted well written well rocky yeah rocky's just like rocky's legendary the way i see rocky at this point is like it's it's legendary to um it's almost like a modern day <clears throat> myth right right like that kind of shit. <laughs> like, like when we're dead for fucking millions of years and something discovers us, <laughs> they're going to they're gonna discover the Rocky story. They're going to be like, oh, shit. Like They had a god named Rocky. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, Adrian. Yeah, he looked like, yeah, uh, an Italian dude that looked like <laughs> a fucking... The melting candle from Beauty and the Beast and shit. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Shit. Yeah. Yo. Shout out to Sylvester, my boy. Who too savage of a roast right there. <laughs> the roast of Sylvester Stallone. They're uh, going to invite you to that shit for sure. Yeah, nah, I got to be there. That's Rocky. hilarious. <laughs> Yo. Okay, Bruh. but Rocky's a good one. Yeah. The, the original, 1976. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's all. Like good films were coming out at that time. You know what I mean? Yeah. I imagine like the best sports film reality. It's gonna be subjective no matter what, but it's gonna exist in that realm of like seventies, eighties, maybe even like sixties. You know what I mean? I don't think. I think once you get eighties, well, nineties, eighties was like get sketch. Like right at the beginning of the eighties, that was like peak storytelling, and then everything just kind of went. Yeah, downhill just to, slowly but surely from there and then now it's just evolved into blockbuster comic book films and fucking no everything's shit. a blockbuster film. Yeah. now a blockbuster film is just a regular film yeah you know what i mean like even a modern sports film like 42 when that jackie robinson film came out it mm -hmm. was like oh my god everything was a super overtly cinematic <laughs> super dramatic shot for everything you know what i mean with sad fucking violins and pianos playing in the back. Like, you know, cutting into a scene of just someone at an office right. on a typewriter. Like, what the fuck? Why does everything have to be so over-dramatized? It's just everything's a blockbuster now. It's unfortunate. Yeah. But you know one baseball movie that I did like that a lot of people don't know about? is called uh, Cobb. Have you seen Cobb? Mm. It's the story of Ty Cobb. No, I don't think so. They, they used to play for the, I believe it was the Detroit Tigers. But he's, it's, the story is, it's about a writer that wants to go write the auto, the autobiography or the biography of uh, Ty Cobb. Mm -hmm. And he goes to his house in like Lake Tahoe to go and interview him. And when he goes over there, Ty Cobb almost shoots him. He starts shooting his gun through the door. Oh, <laughs> and shit. the reporter shows up. And the reporter is shook. He's like, I'm I'm out. Like, whatever. You just try to kill me. And he's like, well, what the fuck? Why are you coming in my house trying to interview? Like, he's just <laughs> wild. He's a wild man from the early days of, like, baseball. And anyways, he ends up going, like, on a road trip with this sports writer for, like, two or three years. This crazy on and off relationship. 
with him and where he's just learning what an asshole and what a piece of shit Ty Cobb is <laughs> in real life. And they go into like a little bit of his playing career too where like he used to do dirty moves like sharpen the bottoms of his cleats. Damn. Yeah, to fucking stick into motherfuckers. Derp he bag. would jab motherfuckers like rounding the bases. No, I mean, <laughs> this is baseball in like the 20s and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> this shit wasn't dirty. This is part of the game still. So, yeah, it it's just a great performance by Tommy Lee Jones. Or it's just classic Tommy Lee Jones. And it's just funny because he plays this grumpy old oh, star. Sounds like him. You know what I mean? Yeah. That actually play, sounds like him. It makes you really believe that he's Ty Cobb and that Ty Cobb really was that piece of shit. Um, supposedly it's based on the true story of the writer that did go and do that. But I don't know how much of it is accurate. But it's a it's a fun film to watch. If you've never seen it. Yeah, I've never seen it. I'm going to have to check it out. Check out Tyke. And yeah, check out Cobb with Tommy Lee Jones. That's a funny fucking movie. That's a good one. (laughs) Yeah, but yeah, (laughs) there's that one. I've never seen like, uh, but I've never seen movies like Moneyball. Like recent Oh, man. I like Moneyball a lot. I I never saw it. I like Moneyball. I never saw it. Even like, and that wasn't even that long ago. What, 2011? Yeah, something like that. Around time when like my son was born. Yeah, nah, I don't, I don't think I've ever seen Moneyball. Fuck that. Uh, what I like about Moneyball though was, um, I mean, it's a great story. Like the screenplay, the writing of it is solid. And um, what's it about? It's about uh the Oakland Athletics being the first MLB team to embrace analytics. So that, you know, the money ball thing, the whole money ball aspect of it, they were the first ones to try to figure out cost to performance ratios and figure out, like, how to get the best players performance-wise that put up the numbers for the lowest prices. Okay. Right? Like, the whole, you know, just how all all pro sports pretty much is going now. Like, they have the super analytics guys and... They're doing all that. Right, like all, all the teams are like data. Yeah, all everything. the teams. A lot of teams are just money balling it now. That's why, like, you hear John Gruden's like, "Well, we're not gonna go that route. We're gonna stick to the old 1990s football." Like, man, come on, dude. Like, just, just, <laughs> like, how do you think the teams are winning? Like, they think they're just like playing old school football and just we're gonna run it down the middle and throw it deep. Yeah, he's just like smacking everybody's Stupid. helmet. Before before they run out the tunnel, it's, it's stupid. Oh, man, yeah. But yeah, so, it's got okay. um, it. I know Brad Pitt's in it. Uh, Jonah Hill. Jonah Hill, and, yeah. And um, but uh, Aaron Aaron Sorkin was one of the writers, one of the main writers of it. So you know, it's like well written, like well researched, well thought out. Like he's usually good with like real. What shit. else has he done? Sorkin. Yeah. Um, man, he's done a lot of shit, dude. No, but I mean, like, just an example for the audience. Uh, I mean, a few good men. Um, Charlie Wilson's War, The Social Network. Um, yeah, like all kinds of shit. Pretty good shit. Uh, he did The West Wing. That was his whole shit. Oh, okay. So if yeah. you ever watch The West Wing, you'll understand like the writing. Like that's him. Like on point. Social Network. Like he makes you know. Like almost biopic type of deals, but like with the mix. But I love how it was shot. Like it, a Wally Feister was the DP of it, and it's just like that's for a long time. That was okay. Christopher Nolan's DP and shit. So it's just a beautiful film. Like it the way it was shot. Look. Yeah, it had that tone to mm-hmm. it a little bit. It, it was just very, very well shot. Uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman's in it. Jonah Hill. Um, <laughs> shout out to Seymour Hoffman. Uh, Chris Pratt is in it before he kind of blew up. He plays well, na- well. Naturally, after those guys blow up, you start seeing them in all their small roles. Right, that they right. did before. <laughs> like, oh shit, this motherfucker was. In well, this movie? was the beginning, like when he first started to like, because he was on Parks and Rec already. But this is when he started to like work out, and you could tell like he wasn't fat Andy anymore. He was kind of like workout He's Andy, workout warrior Andy, yeah. and shit. Uh, his flex. That's out. about that time. Like, so he got that role. That was one of his first like major film roles and shit. I think, but yeah, it's 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 a pretty dope movie. Interesting. I have yet to check it out, but I'll probably check it out. I mean, I've heard good thing. I've heard nothing but good things about it anyway. So, 
But yeah, so I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a dope sports movie. I like it. Have you ever seen any of the uh, Longest Yards, the original or the remake? Mm, no, I don't think so. Oh man, those are those are pretty good actually. Those are classic, I think. The Sandler one, I mean, it's okay. It is what it is. Mm. It's supposed to be super kind of corny, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I feel like at about that point is when like Adam Sandler already kind of like lost that <laughs> magic, you know, that he had. Like, well, that. he was just making like dad comedy okay. films yeah you know what i mean so it kind like of he was like, doing yeah. a lot of those family like vacation films right like so uh no but but uh but the burt reynolds one is really good <laughs> that shit yeah. is fucking awesome anything i feel like anything fucking <laughs> burt reynolds you're like yo this shit <laughs> yeah that's true yeah burt reynolds he's a, is he's cool. an interesting dude that's for sure yeah so longest yard 1974 Shout out. I well, get that one. Some I'll love. write that down too. Yeah, to watch. Check, check that one out. Check that one out. That's the movie. Have you ever seen the fu- the hockey one called Goon? No, nah, that's with Stifler. With Stifler. Yeah, that's nah, exactly I what I was going to say. I didn't, I didn't see Supposedly it. it's pretty good. I've seen the beginning of it, but I always fall asleep before I get I mean, they made it. a second one, right? So uh, it's got to be. I don't know. Uh, well, I'm saying I if they know. did, then it's got to be good enough to. You know what I'm saying? If but but it's super corny. It is, you have to go into it knowing that it is super corny, like American Pie, Stifler, funny. You know what I mean? Uh, like right off the top. It's not trying to be serious at all. But supposedly what people say that's realistic about Goon is the way that they play hockey in it. Like, that's mm-hmm. how a minor league or, like, a local team would play hockey. Okay, so, so it kind of has that... So a lot of guys that play, like, in those rec hockey leagues see it as a good film uh, because they're like, oh, yeah, they got that shit spot on. Uh, you I know get what you. I, mean? I get you. So, that, so that's why that one's kind of been on my list for a minute. And that's why I always don't can't get into it because the beginning is, like, how he ends up on a team like that. You know what I mean? So you're going through that movie and it's really kind of boring me and I'm like, uh, I never get to the good hockey parts. I'm always so disappointed. But I got it, yeah. So I'm going to check out Goon with Stifler for sure. It came out in 2012, so it's not that old. Have you ever seen uh, We Are Marshall? Uh, Yeah, with fucking... Uh, McConaughey? Yeah, 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 with Matt. Yeah, that movie was pretty crazy too. That was like a that was an interesting crazy film. drama, sports drama because well, it was like a well, historical. Well, because it was his story. Right, yeah, so yeah. it was pretty crazy. And like. it's just a crazy story, especially since like that recent shit with that Brazilian soccer team. Oh, you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. it's like that, that same feeling. That kind of shit, wild yeah. shit still happens. Right. Yeah, it, and a it fucking definitely plane can. crash mm-hmm. wipes out a whole team. Imagine. Didn't you tell me about a movie one time? Um, you were talking about it. When we were gambling, uh, two for the money. Two for oh yeah 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 two for the money. Yeah, I ended up watching that fucking Ashes sports fucking movie. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> that, yeah, oh man, that's an underrated yeah. one with Pacino. Because it's a gambling one, so you don't think about a it lot as of people like an actual into sport. It, yeah. But you, well, I'm just saying, you don't think about it like in a sports context. You just think about it like it's a gambling movie. But like they're gambling on sports. They're sports better. Oh so. man. And and it kind of gives you a a little bit of a a little dose of a look into that world a yeah, little bit like uh, that was, like at the top level where it's just like damn this shit is cutthroat but it makes sense you know that was definitely a popping ass and it'll be a one. historical movie because now that it's gone legal like things are gonna obviously change like people are gonna be able to kind of look back at two for the money and be like damn that's how fucking wild sports gambling was back then like yeah man kind of a wild world huh. like you kind of just put yourself out there on a limb but that was a cool fucking movie right and that's an early yeah. mcconaughey before he really like before like he blew he up got on the really drama good. type yeah. shit yeah pacino was already just pacino well, yeah i mean that yeah, was a perfect movie for him but oh, he just fit that perfect man. Yeah. it felt like devil's advocate yeah, yeah i was just gonna like, say like, yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. he felt fucking like, evil as fuck i love that movie that's a good one i'm gonna write that motherfucker down because i didn't have that I mean, I think it was better than, um, I think he did better in that movie than he did in Any Given Sunday. I feel like, yeah, I feel like Any Given Sunday, he just like. But I think the writing for Any Given Sunday was pretty bad. Yeah, that's true. (laughs) Come on. It doesn't, it doesn't make my That's something that never, 
the Oliver Stone never worked out. Yeah, Oliver Stone had the greatest, coolest ideas. When I was young, he was one of my favorite directors, if not my favorite, because he was so controversial and right. just doing like shit that I like. Like he was, was willing like, to do Whoa. shit outside the box, right? Mm-hmm. But he just didn't have. But because of it, because he lived too much in that world, he didn't have his connections weren't as great. You know, he didn't always have the greatest production team. I I feel. But anyways. Yeah, did you have you ever watched that? Uh, because there's not a lot of racing ones either. Have you ever watched that uh, Formula One documentary on Senna? Yeah, I've seen that. That shit's pretty clean, huh? That's a, um, that, that's a pretty cool fucking documentary. But there is a Formula One movie I really, really, really like, and that's a uh, Rush. I heard about that one. I started Man, watching a little bit was... of it, but I heard that that was a really good one, bro. Like that about shit. uh Nikki. Uh, what's his name? Nikki, fuck. Nikki Lauda. Yeah, there you go, Nikki Lauda, mm-hmm. and uh, I forget what the other guy's name is. That was a good rival, uh, early um, what is it, seventies uh, F one rivalry. Yeah, I think it was. I think it was in the seventies when it's it took classic. place. Classic, yeah. But yeah. it was. Um, I seen the videos and like the little mini docs of that shit, and that shit was crazy. Like, yeah, that. it was the, it yeah during the nineteen seventy six season. That's basically the movie takes place during that season. It's about uh, James Hunt and Nikki Lauda's like rivalry, rivalry. and then in, it, the, in that F one championship year, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and like to me, honestly, I feel like it's one of the best edited movies I've ever seen. Really? Like just the way, like, and like how they how they put how they crafted that movie and put it together, based on like, like the historical context was dope, but just how they transition in between different scenes and how those scenes were cut together like man like it's a it's a very funny it's very interesting and it's got a lot of fucking um it's just a well-produced film yeah it's very overall. well done and it was um mm. it was directed I got, by I gotta fucking, revisit that it's directed by ron howard so like you know ron howard is really good at at these kind of like big story like budget type of films where it's like this big biopic almost because like um, like he did Apollo Eleven, that shit was so popping, and um, yeah, like I guess like or block, Apollo Thirteen, Apollo Thirteen, I don't like know why I said blo- Apollo 11. blockbuster biopics, right? Right, yeah. like he could he could handle yeah. those so well, like, yeah. and then Rush was just like, well, he comes from that world, yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah. If you, it, but yeah, you definitely got to watch Rush, like. It's, I gotta revisit it for sure. It's definitely one of my favorite films. I gotta sure. revisit it and just. I mean, I feel like I just had to have it down just being, you know, an F1 fan in general. No, yeah. that's one of my favorite sports films <laughs> in general, just because of how it's cut. <laughs> it's very well directed, very well written. And like the acting is just ridiculous. Like a uh, Daniel Brühl's uh, run as Nicky Lauda is like crazy. Like if you pull up like clips on YouTube of him, just like some scenes of him talking and then you just pull up like actual like interviews with Nikki Lauda like bro you can't tell like if you put them side by side playing like you couldn't hear the difference you would think Is it's the that same like dude. uh Val Kilmer doing Jim Morrison type shit or better <sighs> on that level maybe even better <laughs> maybe I have to I have to I have to revisit doors it's been a long time so I'd have to revisit that okay. actually I think that'd be a good top five um, episode in the future is just like top five biopics or yeah you know or what i'm saying music films too well, we could do music films too yeah but i like to do biopics because there's a lot of those and most of them are really good well not most of them but a good chunk of them <laughs> are really good yeah but um I, I agree yeah we could visit we could revisit that yeah i, I really like rush that's that's a dope film right there so that's rush Okay. What about uh what's your favorite um which ones did we cover? We cover comedy. You know which one we didn't mention in comedy that's really fucking hilarious too? Is the replacements. Oh yeah, the replacements. The replacements is, is hilarious, classic, dude. Man. The replacements wow. is hilarious. That's one we did not mention. Um that's one of my well, favorite my boy, that's one of my Falco. favorite movies. Yeah. <laughs> 
damn that's a class yeah fuck i gotta write that down yeah uh, i like that scene with Faison where he's just like oh son of a bitch son of a bitch son of a bitch and then he just fucking shoots that dude's car the other quarterback's car and he's like you're gonna pay for that he's like no i'm not <laughs> just savage hilarious Yo, that that movie was fucking hilarious. And That's shit. a good movie, yeah. And, and then the other dude's like, movie. "Oh, you smell nice. What's that?" He's like, "Wild yams." And he's like, "Oh, that's nice." <laughs> like, what the fuck? Like, just like, just the interaction between all those characters was hilarious. But it's funny because they were uh, they were able to get away with it without being well. It was dumb. It was super silly for sure. But yeah, it was super without silly. it. But it was. Funny because you knew it was supposed to be that way because all of these guys were like everyday Joes right. that were playing football, right. so it didn't so matter. They had that like, little extra. of course, they had to be like nobody had chemistry. They were all just it was like buddies hanging out. But then you had directly. like Gene Hackman as the coach to kind of like bring it all together and give yeah. it that like strong, like that strong presence to the film that the film needs, like to kind of like well, forward and it. If it was dude, that's actually a really good. And sports Keanu player. being, yeah. you know, that's a really good sports. He's gonna player. be the like clueless, like heartthrob guy. Like, yeah, I want that one to make my list, but I don't mm. know. Replacements. That was a good one to bring up that I hadn't thought. I about. like that one a lot. <laughs> that's one uh, I, I definitely try to watch as much as possible. Oh, what man. about um, what is uh, what's one of your favorite? Not maybe not necessarily the favorite, but what's one of your favorite sports documentaries? Because that would count as a sports film. Oh, shit. Right? Sports documentary. Like, yeah, I know you mentioned Senna. Yeah, but like, Senna's what, a good one. What's um, another one? Shit. Sports doc. I have to really think about some sports documentary. I mean, even like a 30 for 30 episode or anything? Nothing? No, I have to get back to you on the sports docs. Like, All right, I'm uh, have blind, you ever seen? I'm gonna look some up right now. Have you ever seen uh, "We Were Kings"? Which one is that one? That's a documentary about uh, Muhammad Ali and George Foreman's uh, Rumble in the Jungle fight. No, I never it's a saw documentary that. leading up to that. Yo, that shit is popping. That's right. like one of the nuttiest sports documentaries you could ever see, like because it's all like legit behind the scenes footage of like. Oh, I see. Of the whole thing, like the whole pre-fight leading up to it. And then obviously you got interviews from people like telling you their perspective and their point of view was going on around that time. Like, yo, that shit is pretty crazy to just to see like. I do got to see that. And then like, regardless, it's that's cool because it's like, crazy that there's a documentary about that fight. Right. And then it was like in Africa. Right. So like you really see like they really show like how Ali goes around and gets like the people on his side, like. Yeah, and then yeah, it's yeah. like all these like chanting, the diplomacy like, and yeah, everything like he behind did it, the fight and everything. Right, like he did it right. Like, and it's like George Foreman's, you know, the champ, heavyweight champion of the world. <laughs> like Ali's just coming back, like to fighting. Like, it was. It's like a whole mix of nuttiness. And then obviously that's the rope a dope fight too, where he finally gets where he gets I George think, Foreman. So it's like a nutty ass documentary. I think that's why all the sports boxing movies are so epic because it leads to that epic fight. You right know, at the end it's just all oh, every all that build up the culmination of everything just comes down to that final fucking you know 12 rounds right to that end <laughs> yo the culmination of everything i i did see um i did see that lebron doc from when he was young what's that, that called it was called more than a game that's right i guess i've seen that if you can consider that dogtown and z boys i guess a sports documentary I've seen it. I oh get, yeah, I mean that is a doc too. Oh, I guess, right? you know which one's a good one? There's one called um, oh, I saw it on one of those streaming services uh, maybe a few years ago, maybe a couple years ago. It's called the Battered Bastards of Baseball. Have nah, you, have I don't ever, think I've seen that. Okay, this one is about for a short while. Fuck, I wish I had a little bit better information. Hmm. Oh, in 1973. <clears throat> The, they're they still hadn't established the minor leagues in baseball, so there was still independent leagues that were serving as minor leagues, kind of like what's happening with the MLS, like how there's all this independent soccer uh, league that kind of uh -huh. serves, you know mm -hmm. what I mean, as a non-official minor. But for one season, this team in Portland, you know where the fucking Timbers play? 
Dude, that's yeah. that's like a classic baseball ground. Oh, for in real? Portland, oh, yeah. Shit. And this, and so since they didn't have like a pro MLB team, you know how it gets right, in any right. place. Whatever team they had there, they had They're this like, just... yeah. So they had this amateur baseball team there, and they were fucking backed them so hard, dude. And it, it turns out that um, Kurt Russell's dad. <laughs> Was a baseball coach back then. He was a baseball oh, player, and he became a baseball coach, and he was coaching that team. And he, and he, I don't remember how he got sent to coach that team, or I feel like he was coaching in the major leagues, but he was just like, he was just an asshole. You know what I mean? That did whatever the fuck he wanted. He was already like Bill Belichick status. You know what I mean? Like he Sounds was just about like, right. and he was bored with everything. So he went to go coach at the at the uh, minor league team, whatever, and he went actually scouting the best guys in the area. Oh, damn. And built a dope-ass fucking team. Like, that was challenging MLB teams because they would play mm. interleague. And Kurt Russell played on that fucking team, dude, as a little kid. For real? <laughs> yeah, because it was his dad's fucking team. That's actually popping. Oh, man. That was a good fucking... That's probably the best documentary I've seen. <laughs> Just that explanation alone makes me want to watch it again. <laughs> like, whoa, that was a good one. So remember that one, The Battered Bastards of Baseball. I might, They might have it somewhere still streaming. It's probably on Netflix still. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm going to have to check that out. I wonder if it is on Netflix. And and so I think the way he was scouting those players, too, is they were like all of the uh, like MLB teams didn't want these guys. But they were making it up to the audition type right, shit. You right. know what I mean? Like, damn, these guys are badass baseball players. But, you know, they just didn't make the cut. And he was like, well, fuck that. I'm going to take advantage of that. I'm going to get these guys that will have a chip on their shoulder and want to play baseball, you know? We're going to challenge the MLB. And so that's what caused the MLB to create the minor leagues, pretty much. Oh, so they were, they had their hand forced because mm-hmm. it was either that or compete directly. Or compete. They didn't want to compete no more. So baseball just Man, monopolized that's everything. That's smart. Yeah. Honestly, that's smart. Yeah, so at the end of the documentary, not only are you going through this crazy trip where it's just like these everyday Joes because – these are guys that got rejected by the MLB, right? Uh-huh. And he's finding them like one's working at the port. You know what I mean? Another guy he found working at the mail office. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> so it's like hey, the replacement. Yeah, it's it's funny. It's like the replacement. It's it's it's, it's so crazy that it's like that. And so these guys, yeah, they were like, hey, you know, the MLB didn't want you, but we want you. One of one of them was just like a drunk. That it was just like he was so good, but he was just always getting drunk. I think or some shit like that. And so the MLB was like, fuck that. We don't need a player like this. He was all out of shape or whatever, or so you thought. But he was just one of those naturals. You know what I mean? Right. Where it's like he could go get fucked up and then the next day come and just ball. You know what I mean? Like ball any day of the week, any hour. So check that shit out. That, that, yeah, that's probably, yeah, that's the best sports documentary. I've um, seen. I actually got a couple other sports documentaries I like too. Um, what you got? Uh, Magic and Bird, Courtship of Rivals. Okay. I think I did see that That's one. a really dope documentary, like, basically one. talking about their rivalry and how it started and kind of how it saved the NBA and and just where it's at nowadays. Like, that's actually a really dope documentary about shit that I didn't even know. And I had a lot of shit I didn't even know. Like, when they did the commercial together, like, they actually shot that commercial at Larry Bird's farm. So yeah, Magic yeah, had yeah. to pull up to Bird Farm yeah, yeah. and everything like, and just how that rivalry fueled them in but their it's, career. But it's too. crazy, like that's how they became homies. Was that commercial, like Magic going to Bird's Farm? You know, like, like just pull it, like if somebody comes to your house, like, you know what I mean, for business, and then eventually, like you guys chopping it up over the well, day. What are you like, gonna do? You gotta invite them in. You know well, the mean? thing is, like, Larry didn't want to, but um, from the well, at least from the documentary. And how, like, Larry puts it is that, like, his mom made lunch for both of them. And he invited, and he, because of his mom, yeah, he, had, he had, he had to they're bring. they're still young. Right. So relatively. he had to bring Magic to the house, like, from the, like, from the farm barn yeah. type of area where they shot all the shit up to the house. So they went up the hill to the house and, like, had, like, Magic had lunch with his family and all that shit, like, with his mom <laughs> and all that shit. And they're, like, fans of, you know, of Magic and shit. Like, this is, like, the rivalry at this point is more. 
I mean, like they kind of like the media kind of played on it, but not really because it was more in their heads than it was like out in public at the time. It wasn't until they really, really got later into their careers when it was like, okay, like there's a real rivalry going here. Once the media started realizing like it's time to run with it, it's time to like push it. Like before they were just like really good basketball players on opposite teams and they just keep running into each other. You know what I'm saying? So it's like it developed the rivalry developed naturally, just organically. Right. 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 So that was like the beauty of it. It wasn't like who's better, LeBron or Michael. Like, no, like these two dudes went to college at the same time, played in the national championship. Right. Went to the NBA, went to the NBA championships. Like, yeah, yeah. This was this like, is something that's been brewing. For and then they went to the, the two their entire biggest lives, teams in the NBA in terms of rivalry. So like it just yeah. played all into the narrative like. Like Magic and and the Showtime Lakers, right? The big smile, the big personality. The Showtime of just Magic in general really helped that team go. And then the grind, the grit. In contrast to like Larry Bird. The grit, the grind of the the Celtics. Yeah, like it just fit. Everything fit. Like it was just the perfect mix of everything that actually saved the NBA. So if you're an NBA fan and you never seen this before, like without these two, there's a very strong possibility that we would have never got to see Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, LeBron James, Kevin Durant, like Steph Curry, like the list goes on. Like, hmm. because the NBA was in really fi- real strong financial trouble in the late 70s, early 80s because of a lot of drug use. There was fights. The, there was, it was just not very good basketball being played. Um, and there was nobody going to the stand, like to the games, and they didn't have TV deals like they have today. So it was like you were watching games on tape delay. So, like they already played the game by the time you were watching it. The game was already over by the time you even got to watch it. So, yeah. I mean, there was a lot of issues at the time, and if it wasn't for these two players on these two teams, like the NBA probably wouldn't be here today, or at least not as we know it. And so, like, it's a very must-watch documentary, I think, if you're into the NBA straight up. Because it gives you the actual, like, a strong history of where we are right now. Like, how we got what? here. And you know what? It's Lakers-Celtics, baby. Right. You so can't get no better right. than that. Like, <laughs> um, anything Lakers-Celtics, I'm watching. Well, speaking of, of Lakers, uh, another documentary I like is Kobe doing work. It's just about... it's What it is is Spike Lee just got sideline access to the game and were filmed like a whole game between the Lakers and the Spurs. And it was just, and then Kobe comes in and does the voiceover for the game and talks about like what he was trying to do, what he's thinking about, what it's like playing against certain players. And it was just like really insightful into how he plays his game. It was called Kobe doing work. It was pretty dope. Directed by Spike Lee. I remember that one. Yeah. So that was a cool one too. And one I just sent you the other day that I know you probably didn't watch is um Sonic's Gate. It's nah, just, I, it's, wa- I watched the beginning of it, but I didn't watch the whole thing. Yeah, no. it's it's the story of how uh Seattle lost the Seattle Supersonics and it wasn't how they Supersonics. actually got lost. They were actually stolen from them. So it's actually a really good stolen. documentary. Yeah. It, it's actually another one of those like you really need to see this if you're a fan of the NBA because you can understand the history of what's going on here. The and how and how, well not necessarily just that, but just how we got to where we're at. Like how do we how in the 90s was like one of the like the 80s and 90s one of the most exciting teams to watch was like the Seattle Supersonics and now all of a sudden like they're gone and we have some team in Oklahoma with really ugly jerseys. <laughs> they got great players but they but got really ugly jerseys. They're exciting to watch too though. They're exciting to watch too yeah, in their own yeah. way for sure, but they would look so much better if they had green and yellow jerseys. It would just be it would just be a better look instead of those ugly like white and blue and orange like who are you like the fake Knicks? It's like some fake New York Knicks yeah, shit. I, I don't know. It's ugly. Like, their color schemes are ugly. Oklahoma City Thunder. I mean, that's like Memphis. Like, teams from over there are just weird. But, um... So, those are a couple documentaries that I like, though. They're pretty dope. Yeah, for whatever reason, I just couldn't remember documentaries. For me, like, the documentaries don't stand out as much when it comes to sports. I, th- I think because I like... you just think about them more in terms of a documentary than you think about them in terms of sports. Oh, maybe. That's you know? probably true. That's probably true. Right? Like, you're just thinking, like, oh, I, you pro- if I probably, if we did an episode of, like, what's your favorite documentaries, I'm sure one of those is probably going to be a sports oh, documentary yeah, yeah, without yeah, even probably. realizing it. 
Right. Wow, you're just thinking of it's yeah, just yeah, a documentary. Yeah, you're right, you're right. So I could roll with that. I could roll with that. Right. I could roll with that. But um do you remember he got game? Yeah, of course. With Denzel. Yeah, and Jesus Shuttlesworth. And my boy Jesus <laughs> Shuttlesworth. Hey. <laughs> Ray Allen, shout out. <laughs> White man can't jump. White man can't jump. Yeah, those are a few basketball ones. There's a few basketball ones. Where's what about line? remember uh Oh shit, this was gonna s- Okay. What I said Major League was probably the first sports film I ever saw. Mm-hmm. It's probably between these three. I've just narrowed it down in my head. Fucking, it just hit me. Third eye. Boom. <laughs> but prob- either Caddyshack, Major League, or Blue Chips. Oh, Blue Chips. Dude, yeah. I saw Blue Chips when I was young, and that shit Yeah, I forget me about out. that. See, like, I don't even think about that. Like, yeah, that one tripped me out, I forget out, about that man. one. Because I didn't even think about shit like that. Like, basically, the shit that's happening still. You know what I mean? In mm-hmm. college basketball, where like uh, kids are just being offered money or their families are being right. offered money to go play for certain schools. Mm-hmm. And that's basically what that movie was about. But it was cool because it had Nick Nolte in that motherfucker. Um, Shaq. Shaq was in it. Penny Hardaway was in it. There was a bunch of stars in that movie. It was cool. Yeah. And I was watching that NBA. So I was like, oh, that's what actually lured me to start watching it. And then. And then I really just got into the film where I was just like, oh, there's some crazy things happening in this movie. I had never even thought of that at that point in my life. You know what I mean? As a kid, about scandals happening in sports. You know what I mean? Right. I just thought sports are sports. That's it. (laughs) The rawest, in the rawest way, in the rawest form. Like, sports are just sports. You play to win the game. Nope. The 90s had a lot of... Sports are business. A lot of like memorable sports movies for sure. Like sports were easy to sell on the big screen, man, especially basketball because it was growing so big because it was just coming out of the the uh, Magic Bird era and it was just that Michael Jordan era was taking over and the media market was just growing and everything was getting big. So they like Hollywood <laughs> decided to start running with a lot of sports films in the nineties. And basketball, like, they really went hard on basketball. You remember Basketball Diaries with Leonardo DiCaprio? Oh, fuck, dude. (laughs) That shit should have won him an Oscar, bro. That shit should have won him an Oscar. You know, you just blew my mind with that one. That's a good one that I forgot. Wow. Right? Yeah, that's... that. Wow. Yeah, that's in my top 20, like, favorite movies all time, for sure. That's an easy one. Wow. Uh, what about Above the Rim with Tupac? Yeah, Above the Rim was pretty dope. Right? It had a fucking dope-ass soundtrack, too. But, um... <laughs> yeah, Above the Rim was good. That's mm-hmm. a classic. There was some good basketball movies, for sure. Loving Basketball, Loving basketball, basketball Diaries, Above the Rim, Blue Chips. Yeah, the 90s, White Man Can't Jump. The mm-hmm. 90s went hard on basketball films. Space Jam. Space Jam, that's right. Air Bud. <laughs> shit, Air Bud's probably better than that Kevin Durant movie. Shit, what the <laughs> fuck is that shit called? It's something <laughs> stupid like Thunder something or Thunderstruck, I think. What? <laughs> yeah, you didn't know that? No. Kevin Durant put out some B fucking basketball movie <laughs> while he was with OKC <laughs> called like Thunderstruck or some oh, weak ass shit fuck. like that. Yeah, when KD still had his burner account and all that weird, <laughs> shit. Yeah, I mean, he was that weird. burner account. <laughs> uh, That's funny. What about that Uncle Drew movie? I never saw it. Have you seen it? No, <laughs> I just like the commercials. They were funny. Yeah, I I like. I, I feel like it didn't need to go any more than that. Like it was just funny like that, and that was it. Exactly. You so, could have just been done with it. So to me, like shit like that, that's how I feel too. Mm-hmm. Like it was funny when it was raw. Like right. Like jackass. Like that shit was funny when it was raw. But Man, once like, like everybody caught on, like it was bro, like, uh, like I was thinking about jackass. I hate to go off crazy off topic, but um, well, I brought it up. <laughs> it's actually on topic. But uh, <laughs> man, like I was just thinking about like how well, like obviously jackass did great that during the time that it came out, but based on like how like people consume media and like how you just go like YouTube famous and like 
Oh, Instagram yeah. famous, like you're doing like these short clips, like for Instagram, YouTube, like that's each what each one of their segments were was always like a short, oh few yeah, minute clip. We, we don't get here without Jackass. No, but I'm just saying, like that was uh, part of course, of, it. of course, that's part of it. But now imagine, like, if if they didn't exist and they came into the fold now into this mix into this climate, like, bro, imagine how well they would have done. No, and now they, I know they've done they done well in the past, and I'm they would have done like well. But right now, it'd be the problem with now is that it would be a clouded one. Before, because let me tell you something. Me and my, this was before I even started hanging out with you. I had another pair of friends that we got into that fucking backyard wrestling, mm, right? Mm-hmm. And we were filming that already. And so we were doing a lot of very jackass right, shit. Right. And even like, you know, even crazy shit, like hanging out of like car doors and shit while the car's driving. Just stupid right, shit right, like right. that. But it was being filmed already. But we just didn't know how to put it out there. So it's like how many kids were already doing that that didn't put it out? It was just the jackass guys put it out. That's what I'm saying. And that's what changed the game. So if they did it right now in the YouTube era, it would just take one kid to like see them while they're not famous and you'd get a million jackasses just blowing up. That's the problem with this era too. Yeah, is maybe that it's, that's true. That it's just a clouded... They came out at the fucking perfect yeah, time. They were, they they were, were the, just they were on the mark on that. And, and they almost... They are in many ways a little bit pioneers of what have the way that we consume everything now. i think that's maybe that's more so what it is yeah is they di- yeah is exactly is they because their format them. is exactly what the format is today yeah <laughs> oh my god yeah yeah their format is pretty much that where it's just like jump cuts and like extreme funny shit that cuts out dumb little quotes before you do shit you know what i mean like things looking very handheld which is crazy because they were still doing it on camcorders. You know what I mean? But but that's the reason why we wouldn't get our shit out either. It was just for us and our friends to rewatch and laugh at. You know and I mean, because right. it was done on those DV cameras, dude. You could only plug that shit into your TV. <laughs> How are you going to distribute that? That's funny. <laughs> like, I guess if you, the what did the jackass guys eventually do? They probably just sent the tape to MTV, probably. <laughs> Probably. That's probably how it went down. Well, I think they were probably just selling tapes like, um, like a like a skate video type setup. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? See, they were doing skate shit. See, uh, we weren't even doing skate. I shit. think we that was just, just like idiots. shit that was added into their skate videos, and then eventually, like, right, you're right, you're right. And I think eventually like, it just, just kind of like morons. Let's right. take the moronic shit. And let's that see we how do far we can skating. go with this shit. And then they have more dudes in the mix. Yeah, they and probably, they just kind of... No, that's probably what happened. They probably sold a skate video that had a lot of that stupid shit. And people were like, hey, do more of that stupid shit, though, on your next skate video. <laughs> you guys fucking right. suck at skating. <laughs> and then it just kind of blew up from there. Oh, damn. All right, well, let's go back to sports films. Back, 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 um, back. You know what Stanley Kubrick's first film was? Um, Was it Chariots of Fire? No, it was actually a documentary on middleweight Walter Cartier called Day of the Fight. So it was a, a sports documentary. It okay. was Kubrick's first film. Okay. So that's a little interesting fact. And what is that about? About a, a, It's a documentary on middleweight Walter Cartier. Who's Walter Cartier? I just a middleweight maybe. boxer from oh, the 50s or the 40s. Dude. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. That's an interesting one. I've never even heard of that, so I'll definitely write that down. What was the name of that again? Uh, Day of the Fight. My Day, bad. Day of the Fight. Yeah. It's a... Uh, I haven't seen it, but that's just a little fact that I know. Well, it's early Kubrick, so it'll be interesting even if it's bad. Right. I'm interested to see how he shoots a documentary. Yeah. Like, even <laughs> if it's bad, it's just like, well, we're inside but the But it was mind. probably shot crazy. Yeah, we're inside <laughs> the mind of, like, an early genius regardless what about um all right so i think i think we kind of touched on a little bit of each kind of category of sports films from documentaries to comedies to dramas um very yeah, much so have you come up with anything that's made your list so far yeah well yeah i think i can formulate a list somewhat what about you you have a legit I'm, list? I'm pretty close, but I don't have a number one yet. I have a number one. I'm just having trouble filling out the uh, bottoming out here. 
I feel like the bottom part is easy, but the top one is harder. I think it gets harder at the top. Oh, man. I always just sandwich these. I don't know how I do that. <laughs> I just pick my last and then and work my your first. way in. Yeah, yeah, it's weird. That's interesting. It's a weird way to work. Oh, da, man. Da, 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 da. Um, shoot. I don't know. That's tough. I guess maybe I could bump up and then just fill in at the bottom. <laughs> that's yeah. probably how, that's probably just how I just have to do it. It's just I'll go with that and then bump myself down. Yeah. Okay. Um. You know some interesting movies that I don't ever think about like that are sports movies, but I don't ever think about them as sports movies. It's like, is the big Lebowski. Okay. Cause it's kind of bowling. Right. Cause they yeah. got the bowling league or shit like that. Like it's a lot revolves around the bowling, but like at the same yeah. time, nothing revolves around the bowling. That's a funny ass movie, but I, I never really think about it as a sports movie. I just think about it as just a funny, interesting movie. They got a famous Jesus in there too. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> Jesus so making take that up. everywhere, but uh, <laughs> no, like like uh, Paul Newman's uh, movies too, The Hustler mm. and the uh, follow up with fucking um, Tom, Tom Cruise, Cruise Color yeah. of Money. It's about yeah. pool, but it's but you fucking, don't really think about it as but like, it's, but it but but the fact that he's hustling, it's almost turning it into a sport. You know what mm. I mean? In a sense, right? Just That's like true. two for the money, right? That's true. <coughs> So, I like those. I like Color of Money a lot better, but I like both of those movies. I feel like I could do a whole episode <laughs> on just probably breaking down those two movies. That's how good. That's how good I think those movies are. Actually, I need to go. On, I need to go on a little refresher course for those. Yeah, some of these movies been are a hidden gems for sure. Yeah, it's been a minute for me. Oh man, I only gotta fill in one more. Whoo! I know that's kind of where I'm at too now. Just on that last one. But um. But that's the beauty about having this discussion because, like, even that extra talk right there, I might have just added my last one. Maybe. Man, I'm down to like, three. I'm down to three. I feel like every boxing movie was good. Just about the boxing movies are always like I said; those are always gonna have that. Di they're gonna have that dynamism because, like, like we said, it's coming to that final fight. Mm. You know what I mean? It's that buildup. It's like every fucking Van Damme movie. You know yeah, I mean? that's true. Like you knew he was gonna fight the final boss. You know? Yeah, that is true. Yeah, it always leads up. It's like a perfect mix of storytelling. It kind of just leads to where you want to where you want it like in your head you know what i mean like just that good feeling of just coming to an end like the happy ending type shit yeah always make sure you ask for a happy ending <laughs> don't forget it um shit you know the golf movies have been funny too they had tin cup with kevin costner did you watch that one yeah kevin costner was just he was smooth as fuck in his uh, in his prime though. I'll give him that. He just one cool ass fucking dude. Like you felt like you could probably hang out with Kevin Costner. You know what I mean? <laughs> and just have a good time. Yeah, but he's probably an asshole. <laughs> yeah, but it almost made you feel like yeah, I can hang out with Kevin Costner. Man, what about him. what about Mortal Kombat? Would that classify <laughs> no, as a sports get film? The fuck out of here. <laughs> I'd rather have a Van Damme in that bitch. <laughs> Fuck that. Or some Bruce Lee shit in that case. Shit. <laughs> Smooth move, though. I like that shit. I'll throw Ninja Turtles in that bitch. <laughs> oh, uh, shit. Fuck it. Well, I mean, you know. That's, so that's like stretching too much then, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Uh, right. Not too, yeah. Not too fantastical, you know what I mean? Like, just trying to stay within the spirit of the actual sport. Yeah, right. right, right. All right, so do you got it or nah? I got my top five. I'm ready to go. All Let's right. go. Um. Well, 
Then you lead it off. Then go ahead. All right, and it's great that we didn't that we formulated this on the way because I was able to like make some match, and I don't feel like I kind of cheated. Like, oh, I just barely heard about. It. I want to add to no. This is my top five based on this great discussion we just had about this shit. So at number five <clears throat> is Cobb with my boy Tommy Lee Jones because I just think he plays he plays Ty Cobb so well in that like I don't know anything about the actual biography of Ty Cobb, but the little that I have read, like Wikipedia type shit, right, and little right. Google searches, like he was that asshole. You <laughs> know what I mean? And so I feel like Tommy Lee Jones really made me feel that way as I was watching that film. Like, yo, this is some crazy old motherfucker that played baseball in the 20s. And he's just one of those old OG dudes that lived through World War One, World War Two, and are just set in their ways and are not fucking, they're not fucking around. And he was one of the greatest baseball players of all time. Shit. Crazy. Facts. Pretty crazy. Number four. <laughs> Number Number four was tough, but once you brought this movie up, it blew my mind that I and I didn't have it on my list or anything. But Basketball Diaries, that's crazy. Yeah. Like, I saw that movie when I was young. I don't. I, what year did that come out? Cause ninety five, I think. Yeah, I saw that one on one of those black box like <laughs> everybody's asleep late at night trips where it was just on, and I was like, fuck, there was no other good movies on. And just put it on. I didn't even care about, like, whatever the description said. And the first time I saw that movie, I was like, what the fuck did I just watch? Because it almost felt like Kids. Remember the movie Kids? Yeah. It was like the... The basketball the version. early of version of Kids. Yeah. yeah. Dude. Yeah, 95. Yeah, see, that movie was crazy. In 95, I was around that age, around what, like, Leo's portraying in that movie. Mm. So it made it almost feel crazy to me, too. Like, fuck, these are kids my age doing wild, wild shit. shit. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Basketball Diaries is popping. So that's why I blew my mind at that time. But anyways, it's still a good movie. I'll fucking rewatch. I'm going to rewatch all of these on my top five. It makes me want to watch them. That's how oh. good this shit is. But anyways, number three, of course, was Blue Chips. Popping. Because like I said, that's just that's just a really good sports movie. And it's also a good I guess semi-historical sports movie in terms of even when I watched it, I thought I was just watching a movie that had a lot of cool basketball players that I liked. Uh -huh. But it turns out that it was exposing a scandal that's very real and that's still real very existent and relevant yeah, right now. today. Yeah. yeah. So it's like you could watch that today and it's still relevant mm -hmm. because that's all the same shit that's in the news. And that's why you see the NBA's G League and everybody's trying to allow 18-year-olds back in the league. There's all these other leagues that are popping up that we talked about in previous episodes, like the Historical Basketball yeah. League oh, yeah. and and LeVar Ball's JBA. But what's so, crazy is that it's been, it's basically been exposed right. by Hollywood well, and other right. other sources. It's a long time and coming. Yeah. It's just still they still didn't give a fuck. Oh well, yeah, because there's so much money being made <laughs> that oh, man. you know you just get rid of the motherfuckers that fucked up, put themselves in the spotlight, <laughs> and you let the next motherfucker That's shine. Crazy. Whoever can keep their mouth shut longer eats more. So, yeah. So, number three, Blue Chips. Go go check that shit out. And number two is actually one that we didn't talk about all day. But I, the more I thought about it, I was like, I've always just liked it. Uh, but the more I thought about it, I was like, no, this was a deeply influential film for me, too, as a, as a kid when I first watched it. But it's League of Their Own. Okay. About, the, about the girls yeah, the that females, start playing yeah. baseball in yeah. the baseball league and it happened back in the uh well i think i want to say that it's in the early 20s 30s somewhere around something there. like that yeah and so yeah women were not supposed to be doing anything like that still remotely and it's got one of the greatest fucking actors of all time in fucking uh tom hanks mm -hmm. and that motherfucker just playing a great role as that fucking drunk coach <laughs> There's some classic scenes in there. Madonna's in that movie too. There's a lot. There's a lot of. There's a lot of famous people in that. Yeah, 1992. Yeah. So you know, it was just right on that. Everybody was getting some shine at that point. Oh yeah, yeah. Anybody they no, could get. League yep. of Their Own is a classic movie. It, it. If you if you've never seen it, check it out. It's pretty good. And number one, as I've said before, is Raging Bull. Popping. I don't even have to explain that number one because yeah. because you know you let me do it early, which is good. But yeah. So, 
I'll go through them one more time from top to bottom. At number five, Cobb. It's kind of a uh, you know, biographical movie about Ty Cobb. Uh, Basketball Diaries, Leonardo DiCaprio. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Blue Chips, Nick Nolte, Shaq, a bunch of other NBA players. League of Their Own, Tom Hanks, Madonna, Gina Davis, Winona Ryder, all kinds of other people. And uh, Raging Bull, De Niro, you know, Scorsese. And uh, who else? Who else was that? Peak. That was peak right there, too, <laughs> for both of them, I feel yeah, like, too. Yeah. It was like, well, maybe not for both, but that was that was definitely a peak time for them. No, but not, they, not for they, both. That was like De but Niro's they, beginning, too. But they like, were on that, just... but they just stayed on that peak. Yeah, but I feel like they like, created a whole new mountain that motherfuckers had to try to reach at, from that point on. Not even from that point on, from taxi driver till fucking casino and shit. Like they were just like murdering every fucking thing that they and touched he, together. And he also had Deer Hunter. Deer yeah, that's what oh, I'm just saying, like all the way through, like just everything they we touched gotta do together. Top five De Niro movies. <laughs> Man, like at some yeah. point, yeah, that's that's yeah. how epic that list is. I mean, uh-huh. and then we still got um, the <laughs> Irishman coming. <laughs> so the Irishman is gonna have Pacino, De Niro, um, Pesci, Ray Liotta. Uh, I mean, shit. he's bringing okay. air, uh, the whole squad back, like essentially. But instead of doing the Italian mafia, they're gonna do the Irish side now. Interesting. So okay. it's a whole new. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be popping. I'm fucking with that shit. So what's your- I think that's gonna be on Netflix. So what's your top five? You got one? Um, all right. So I'm gonna start off with a, actually with a documentary. Ooh, okay. That's in my fifth spot, and that's when we were kings. So that's the Ali Foreman documentary okay. about the that one seemed jungle. really interesting. Yeah, it's I like popping, that. so popping. Um, at number four, I got a comedy actually, Happy Gilmore. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's one a of good my. One. That's like one of my favorite that's a good movies one, for sure. Like it's so hilarious. And it's sort of two sports because the, the hockey aspect and the golf. Right. I guess. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, at number three, I have um, I have Rush. Okay. That's the that F one movie. The F one yeah. movie, yeah. Mickey Lauda. Yeah, and then so I mean we kind of went over these, but um, and then at number two. I actually got Remember the Titans. Okay. That's uh, one I mean, it's kind of corny but, yeah. and shit, you know? It's, but for me, like, it was always one of... I always liked that movie ever since it came out till now. Like, it's it's funny. It's sad. Like, it's got the drama. It's got the uh, mad comedy. It's got good music in it. Like, from, from the era... Music from the era. So, you know, it's like oldies but goodies type shit. Yeah, A lot yeah. of temptations and shit like that. So, it's like... Man, like, for me, it's just well done all the way around. Like, obviously, Denzel is like a fucking god. In that right. movie, like just his acting is just so on point, like always. It's like a real feel good movie. Yeah, it's a good feel good movie. Got it, like for me, know. it's a good Saturday movie. Like, cause if I'm thinking about a sports movie, I'm gonna throw on like on a lazy Saturday. I probably just throw on Remember the Titans or something like that. Something okay. I don't necessarily have to pay full attention to, but I could catch all the funny, good parts and shit like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and at number one, I have the same number one, Raging Bull. Yeah, that's just. I mean, crazy. it's it's too well crafted. It's, it's just crazy. That too it's, well acted. That it's too well written. Film. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's not even a real sports film. It's just a great <laughs> film in general. But it has it actually has to make my number one as well because. Oh man, right. It's not like cool. I could put Rocky over it or, you yeah, know what I mean. And then like yeah. the first Rocky might not even be the best Rocky. Even you know it was just the what started it all, and it's just the whole. It's what you remember from everything, but really, it's like. I like Rocky Four better. <laughs> it's if he dies, that, he dies. It's just the other yeah, one that you re- you relate yeah, to most you know, nostalgia. I, to. I just thought yeah. that was cool. Plus, you know, that's the I one where it. where Creed dies, right? And yeah, then yeah. that's that movie is kind of what sparks the whole new era of of the Rocky films, right? Yeah, the whole yeah. Creed series now, like it's all sparked based on that movie more than and anything. Then, so. And yeah, then like, that Russian dude started doing Universal Soldier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. That fucking Russian dude I was seen him crazy, on, man. He, he like tried to challenge Van the American Damme gladiators and shit. And shit. <laughs> oh, He's yeah. like, well, I'm a Russian gladiator. Oh, <laughs> man. <laughs> it's crazy. Those fucking people get so big over there. <laughs> Hey man, oh, I mean, man. you be the one motherfucker that makes it out, <laughs> right? Those old crazy European genes, man. <laughs> Survival. 
So yeah, the, my my five again are at number five, When We Were Kings, it's a documentary. Number four, Happy Gilmore. At number three, Rush. At number two, Remember the Titans. And at number one, Raging Bull. All and right. that wraps our top fives out. And that's I a believe com- that's that, a complete fucking top five episode right and I there. I believe that completes the Woo! whole episode. So um, thanks for tuning in. If you're listening on YouTube, make sure you hit the subscribe and the bell notification below the video. If you are listening on your favorite podcast app, make sure you subscribe and share with your friends. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at WDKS Podcast. And I guess we'll see you next episode. Yep. Blue chips. Rage of bull. Ha! <laughs>